Greetings and salutations, all you beautiful people, and welcome to another episode of Art of the Beholder, a show dedicated to all things eclectic in the world of art, where we do deep dives into deep cuts and help you understand why damn things matter. I'm your host, Novo Day, and today we're going to be talking about art and music, specifically jazz music, focusing on Nubia Garcia's album, Source. Now, we're talking about Source today because, well... Nubia Garcia is just another amazing artist that in the last 10 years has really forged this renaissance for jazz, this awakening in this love and this craft that is jazz music. Another great contemporary that would just make the legend so, so very, very proud, including the inspirations that led her to become a jazz artist, including Miles Davis and, of course, fellow tenor saxophonist John Coltrane. Now, before we can really discuss the album source, of course, we all need a little background. Before she became a well-known English jazz musician, saxophonist, composer, and band leader, Nubia Garcia was just a young girl with a dream. Born in 1991 in Camden Town, London, she was the daughter to a Guyanese civil servant mother and a British Trinidadian filmmaker father. She first learned to play violin before transitioning to her staple instrument, the saxophone, at the age of 10. And after years and years of continued schooling and music, the rest, as they say, is history. Now, today we're going to be focusing on technically her very first LP, Source, as already stated, from top to bottom. But before we can discuss, of course, we need a little word from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by the novel The Entropy Sessions, a tale of loss, love, and madness, and our past, present, and future relationships with technology. Find it on Amazon and as an audiobook through Audible. Your support helps us continue our journey. Now back to the show. Now, before we go into the album in question, we need a little history lesson. So in 2017, Nubia made Nubia's 5 EP. In 2018, she made the EP When We Are. And now that brings us to 2020 with Source. Released on August 21st, 2020, it was produced by Quez and Garcia herself and features pianist Joe Armand Jones, double bassist Daniel Casimir, and drummer Sam Jones. And as we like to do on these kinds of episodes, these quick cuts, we have to discuss the album just from top to bottom. Now, to frame the piece that is Source, we have to say this very important thing, and that this album is a goddamn music history lesson. It starts with pace, touches of written melodic motifs, of course held together by uh, Garcia's sax melody lines, but all to this wonderfully chaotic series of movements. The production is something to note here as well. It is well weighted and all the instruments get equal footing. Everything sounds equal in the mix, equal space that is for each instrument so that every instrument has a distinct lane. Track number two is the message continues. And the first thing that hits you is that rhythm section. It's busy, but superb at the same time. The drum line is more jazz fusion. Remember, we're going through a history lesson where whereas pace was a little more traditional in its roots, this is starting to see that evolution into jazz that, as I already put, we call jazz fusion. We're hearing touches of hip hop and other forms of genres. So we're seeing a good shift in this history lesson. But the uh, the sax melody is, is uh, relatively simple, but uh, always tasteful and very, very memorable. Track three is the title track source. It features Miss Maurice Casey Kenoshi and Richie Sievright. Source is a centerpiece kind of track. It's a little more beginning center uh, since it is track three. But granted, these are jazz pieces, so of course they run a little long. Pace was seven minutes, 53 seconds. The message continues, six minutes, 45 seconds. And Source <laughs> clocks in the longest track on the album, 12 minutes and eight seconds. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but I would say Source and the very next track together is a beautiful place to be. Really hold the album together as a centerpiece. But let's focus on Source for a little bit. So as I already said, uh, this is probably my favorite track on the album for obvious reasons. 
exact same reason they they named the album Source. And uh, like I said, it holds the two pieces together. This track, this composition is clearly a little less improvised and a little more orchestrated, to be honest. I can hear that in the movements, how they wrote out the acts, the motifs, the melody lines. It starts with that wonderful uh, reggae phrasing, right? You just you want to start kind of dancing to it a little bit. The piano lines are doing the offbeat. Dun, dun, dun. And uh, it really creates the f- the f- the foundation with um, those key lines hitting the off beats and the rhythm section holding it down on the down beats. We're hearing um, a lot of God, this I got to take a minute to talk about this drummer. He is incredibly tasteful, incredibly punchy and bombastic when he needs to be can pull it back when he needs to be is incredible jazz drummer. Um, I I'm probably going to keep Sam Jones on my radar and uh, put that name in the back of my head, and you should do the exact same. As I was hearing it, of course, I got contemporary drummers are probably inspired by the same kind of drummers I was. So I hear a lot of Stuart Copeland in those drum lines. And of course, Stuart Copeland was inspired by other traditional reggae drummers of, uh, of before his time. So they probably were all inspired by those older sounds. And again, uh, just to tie into the theme of the episode and thesis that this album is a music history lesson, we are uh, going down the rabbit hole into the Caribbean, right? And that's where we're hearing these reggae sounds and things like that. Even though the piece is long, again, 12 minutes and eight seconds, it feels very smooth and effortless. It doesn't feel like a 12-minute song at all. I mean, I could easily listen to just this track over and over again and uh, just be entertained by the rhythm sections alone. What's even better is we're starting to see the vocals come in, the vocal harmonies that are creating this richness, this texture against the saxophone harmonies and melody lines. This creates a new foundation for her to even solo over. Uh, The first time in the album, she really takes hold in solos and just blows you the fuck away. And um, so this is like the first time she's really going out there, really hitting you hard, really taking you to a brand new place. And as the piece concludes, we also get that with a beautiful, fantastic, mind-bending piano solo as well. And that brings us home and into the second half of this centerpiece, track number four. Together is a beautiful place to be. We slow things down here. It's get a little slower, get a little slower now. Things get a little sexier as well. And it sounds like the drums themselves are helping to create the movements. They move from brushes to what sounds like mallets to then sticks again, which creates a lot of dynamics in and of themselves. But it's the bass line that really anchors the piece here. And this again allows that beautiful sax melody line to shine. So with this piece, Together is a Beautiful Place, we've also transitioned back to a more simple melody line, but dramatically longer and more complicated in scope and length. That's important than her previous lines. We're also greeted with an incredible bass solo to finish the piece out. Together is a Beautiful Place to be clocks in at 7 minutes and 36 seconds. Track number five is Stand With Each Other. This again features Miss Maurice, Casey Kenoshi, and Richie Sievright. Now, this uh, to me is um, venturing into those kind of musical ideas and structures and movements that almost have a gospel or spiritual like essence to them. And this is probably one of my favorite sax melody lines of the entire album. It's a shorter piece that clocks in at three minutes and 39 seconds, but it is everything you would want it to be in this composition as a whole. The piece is very stripped down, almost tribal at times, and touches on even Middle Eastern kind of phrases. So again, we are not only not only going through a history lesson of jazz music and its different genres, forms and evolutions, but we're traveling around the world. We're seeing a lot of different styles and a lot of different places. This one brings us to uh, the East in a lot of ways. 
And with this piece, she's really talking to you with that sax, you know, and those allow those vocal harmonies to shine through again. That leads us to track number six, Inner Game. Now we're, oh, uh, this is, yeah, this is a close second. This is a sleeper hit, you know. Source, probably not my favorite track on the album, but Inner Game, ah, man, it's a contender. So we're entering into that neo-jazz rock kind of sound, that New York, Steely Dan, Steve Gadd kind of jazz. Both feeling free and improvised, but equally somehow sounding written out and orchestrated at the exact same time. I have nothing but amazing things to say about it, and you should give it multiple listens if you get a chance. That leads us to track number seven, La Cumbia Me Esta Llamando, featuring La Perla. If you're wondering what La Cumbia Me Esta Llamando translates to, that is the cumbia is calling me or the dance of Colombia is calling me. So the cumbia is a famous dance uh, of that area and that part of the world. And um, so we're taking a trip down to Latin America now. This is one of two tracks that is probably the closest thing to a traditional song on the album featuring La Perla uh, vocals, singing, giving more traditional song structure to the piece with her vocal lines, melodies, and harmonies. The piece obviously touches on cumbia music as a genre, so we're seeing it throughout the piece in just these incredible movements. It also touches on, um, besides cumbia, it also I can hear a little samba in there. And uh, overall, it's, it has such a warmth to the piece because we're finally hearing female sung lyrics. The runtime also suggests the same. It clocks in at four minutes and 15 seconds. That leads us to track number eight before us, colon in Damarara Ankara. And this features Miss Maurice again, and you can really hear the trumpet shine through on this piece, and that is Miss Maurice playing. And we're pushing into that Latin sound even further. I'm hearing a little more salsa, mambo, and rumba, but uh, we're hearing balances of more traditional jazz compositions than the previous piece, La Cumbia. This one's a little, as I already mentioned, since this is a, a little more of a traditional jazz composition fused with a lot of Latin flavored sounds and textures and styles. It's, it's, of course, going to be a little longer. It tracks in at eight minutes and one second. And we are delighted with a incredible trumpet solo at the end by Miss Maurice. That brings us to track nine, Boundless Beings, feature Akenya. Uh, this is the second of the two pieces that are the closest thing to what I would call a song on the album, featuring a jazz vocalist, um, as already mentioned, Akenya. And it's an incredible closer. It really brings the piece together. And again, it clocks in at two minutes and 47 seconds. And because of that, of course, it's a little short and sweet, just like our quick cuts here. So think of it as a dessert after your entree, where tracks one through eight really are the heart of the meal and boundless beings is that incredible dessert to put the bow at the end of this and bring us home and there you have it guys nubia garcia's source from top to bottom in conclusion this is another amazing jazz album that you have to listen to you have to sink your teeth into you have to really fall into this world that you created now to end this i want to say this this is a jazz album for all people traditionally Jazz is usually for a small group of music lovers, but I but I would argue that this kind of album, this specific history lesson and trip around the world will not only be a big hit with the jazz lovers, but also with the people on the other end of the spectrum, even the people that just listen to the top 40 hits. I bet if you put this on in the background, they will enjoy it because there's such an energy to it. A, um, as I said, bringing us back run circle to the beginning of the piece when I talked about pace, there's just this epicness right out of the gates and you feel that way through the whole album. And there you have it, a jazz album for us all, again, to help that renaissance that's bringing us further and further into the future. 
Now, before I go, I don't normally do gems of the week for these quicker cut episodes, but I was compelled to do one. So before we go, I still appreciate you and thank you so much for listening. But before we go, we got a little more for you, a little icing on the cake, a little cherry on top with what we call the gem of the week. If you don't know what the gem of the week is, it's something that we like to talk about here at the end of our episodes, but it doesn't quite fit into the scheme of the main body, but we got to give it to you nonetheless. So you guys can dig deeper. Now, this particular artist was very much connected to this renaissance of jazz musicians that we're seeing in the last decade. And I knew I eventually I was going to talk about him, but I didn't know in what context or or what kind of a show. Eventually, he'll probably get his own quick cut or full length episode if we're going to do probably a full career episode. And his name is Kamazi Washington, and he is another. <laughs> this is kind of a coincidence until I looked it up and I feel like it's really a it's really serendipitous the stars align it's another tenor saxophonist so we have three that we've talked about today John Coltrane the legend Nubio Garcia the newcomer and Kamazi Washington the man in the middle albums that you should check out by him is uh there's two main ones I would I would check out a, a good um appetizer if you will a good way to just dip your toes in the deep end is with his ep harmony of difference this is in oh my god i get words can't describe how amazing of a jazz record this is and then i you uh, probably need to take a week off of work to listen to his triple lp that's right not a regular lp not a double lp a triple lp called very fitting the epic that is an incredible collection of musical pieces that, again, help bring this mold and future of jazz to a new audience, to a new market, and helps to keep it evolving and getting into the next generation of kids and kids after that that hopefully will fall in love. So there you have it. Thank you guys again for listening. If you like that, of course, you can check out our products at underscore Novo and underscore Day and Day is D-E and at Novo Day Media. You can, of course, check out some of our products at NovoDayProductions.com. There you'll find things like the Entropy Sessions, Post Meridium, Adulteration, Cancel Culture Lotto, and a lot more to come. So like and subscribe and follow and hit that notification bell. Do all the things, rate, review, and comment. And if you'd like to sponsor our little love child here, you can do so by reaching out to us at NovoDayMedia at gmail.com. Com. So until next time, guys, be good to each other. And as always, good luck and Godspeed. We love you. Art of the Beholder is brought to you by Novo Day Productions, created and hosted by Novo Day and the Novo Day Collective. Facebook.com slash Novo Day Media, at Novo Day Media on Twitter and Instagram. Music by A Company, Facebook.com slash Aco Music 123, Aco on Spotify. Logo designed by Tom Justice, J-E-S-T-U-S, of thejusticecompany.com, and executively produced by Clayton Anderson. All rights reserved.